plant may be damaged. Experts say the injury of three workers at the plant on Thursday provided evidence uh, to raise their suspicions. The wounded workers had 10,000 times the safe levels of radiation. However, Japan's nuclear safety agency says there's no data to suggest a rupture in the reactor. Japanese, the Japanese government also says its seaports are safe from radiation and that those affected by the earthquake are now operational again. And our correspondent, uh, Margot Ortigas, joins us live from Morioka. Uh, Margot, first of all, just bring us up to date on uh, the events happening now, right now at the, uh, at the nuclear plant. Fears that the containment vessel has been uh, erupted, I think, at Reactor 3? Yes, that's exactly what was reported here. Uh, there was a press briefing with scientists from the uh, Nuclear Safety Agency who were quoted by the local media as having said that they believed that uh, there was a compromise to the containment function of Reactor 3. However, several hours after that, other local media outfits were then saying that the same Nuclear Safety Agency was saying that there was no rupture that they could actually confirm. So there seems to be a lot of contradictory statements uh, being referred back to government officials, to scientists, and this is precisely why many of the Japanese people feel that the only thing that's clear for them right now is that nothing is clear. There is a lot of confusion and there is a lot of concern. Now, as far as the civilians are concerned, who don't really understand much of the terminology that are being used by the government officials, is that for as long as they see smoke billowing out of any of these reactors, and indeed for as long as the reactors themselves haven't been shut down, they will feel unsafe and concerned. So is the government thinking about expanding the exclusion zone at all around the plant? So far, they have said that there is no need to expand the exclusion zone. What they have said is that those who are 10 kilometers outside of that zone, who have expressed a desire to leave for mandatory evacuation, are very welcome to do, to do so. However, they have assured those same residents that there is no immediate threat to them and that they really shouldn't feel like they need to run for their lives, as it were. But the problem is, in that same area, many supplies haven't been able to get in, so they are now in uh, short supply for food, for water, Water, and indeed for medication for any of them that might have been injured during the earthquake. Many of these people saying they would rather flee than have to stay there and deal with the possibility of contamination. And what about the growing international concerns about contamination, Margaret? I mean, uh, some countries banning food exports from Japan and now concerns from ships uh, who don't want to stop at the ports in Tokyo. Indeed, this is another thing that the Japanese government is concerned about. Again, they have been trying to reaffirm to the international community that they have the situation under control, that at least it is manageable, and that the port area and Japan itself is still relatively a safe place to come. It is in need of help, and a lot of other shipping companies have actually expressed support, saying that those that don't come to Japan for fear of radiation contamination will actually be doing a disservice to a country in great need of help. At this time. Again, Japanese officials trying to reassure not just their own citizens, but the global community that things are under control and there is no need to fear. Okay, Margaret, thanks very much indeed for that. Margaret Ortigas in Morioka there.